So Lagos Theatre Festival is essentially different performances, one from the UK, three from Nigeria, and putting them in non-theatrical or unconventional spaces. We were scoping out various sectors to work in um, to sort of ramp up the work we were doing in arts. Theatre makers here had the ideas of the shows they wanted to make, they had the talent, but they were having problems accessing venues and there was obstacles there in terms of the location of venues and audiences coming to venues, but also obstacles that were financial as well. They're, they're usually very expensive to hire. We knew that in the UK, even where there are theatres, there's a form of theatre where you don't need an actual theatre, which is essentially theatre in non-theatrical spaces. And so we started to explore that as a theme to help theatre makers in Nigeria to start to think about how to make work exciting, contemporary new work that people would want to see in spite of the fact that there were no theatres. And so we've been on a two-year journey with some of the directors who are in this festival to help them develop skills around creating the content, building the audiences for work outside a theatre space. Quick thinking, service. Life is Being called to be part of the Lagos Theatre Festival is different for us because now our play has to respond to the venue. It's not just a regular stage where, you know, it's a four-cornered thing, a three-cornered thing, and you know what to expect behind you. Now we have to respond to the entire venue itself. So the play becomes a living thing. You know, there's some kind of symbiosis going on between the venue and the play itself. Most times when I get to talk to a lot of friends and tell them, oh, we're doing this play, they say, oh, yeah, they could, they could. So I say, yes, but it's a bedroom. I go, a bedroom? A bedroom? How's that going to work? I say, I'm telling you, just 20 people. 20 people in the bedroom. I give her a job in my company. I pay her daughter's fees. So tell me, my dear wife, what else do you want me to do for her? Marry her? Is that a burning desire you never set in now? Look, Is that so he's really forced us to really you know to think over and over again if um, the story is being told well, if it's um, if the message is being passed across because of the space we're working in. I feel that yes, I'm getting to the audience. I'm relating, and they can also relate to me. It's, it's that world is broken. We are right in each other's faces. We are talking to each other. So it's a fantastic experience for me. I'm very glad I'm part of it. In an enclosed place, we have restrictions. You know you can't, you can't go past the stage, for instance. Here, the whole place is a stage. Even the audience is a stage. You know, you can just talk to them, just communicate. It's just so much easier. That's what I was saying, that you, you give 100%. You just, you just flow with, with everything that is happening. The ambience is just perfect. All this time, when I take bad belay, can't dig my, my fish. And I forget it. Every day for the tea, one day for the owner, every day for the tea, one day for the owner, today, today, now for me. Working with the British Council on the Lagos Theatre Festival has um, actually added an intellectual edge to what I do. The theatre goes beyond just the practice. There's a lot of um, intellectual groundwork that you need to do to understand your environment, your audience, just understand the whole industry as a whole. It's given me other, other options to explore and exploit. It's given me other ideas to, to tap from. And so to have such cultural exchange, it sort of reminds you that what you're doing is relevant. In some way, this is some kind of traveling for us, even though we are in Lagos, or we're part of an international festival sponsored by the British Council, with an international company coming down it's been eye-opening for me to realize just how vastly different, different the difficult markets are and how the models, for instance, of communication is different and is just vastly challenging here than it is there. We've sat down and spoken about the difficulties in creating work in Nigeria versus the model that exists in the United Kingdom and if there are any ways for a conversation and dialogue can exist and a skill share slash a skill swap. 
it would be amazing to be able to glean from each other, learn from each other, collaborate, do things, and do things differently. And I'm actually quite amazed at this, and I think it's great. Um, and I'm so glad I'm a part of it. This is like an eye-opener for everybody. You don't have to go to conventional spaces. It's, it's, it has more economic value working in non-conventional spaces because less should be spent on how much we put into productions. We hope that audiences will find the performances in this festival, for example, so good that they would warm up to the idea of going to theatres, to theatre performances outside theatres. But most importantly, if it's something that is continued, I think it would be very, very good if next year, or maybe the next two years, there's another Lagos Theatre Festival where we get to see other stories, you know? I think if we had like a movement, like from here, we're moving there, and, and we continue, if it's constant, I think it would grow, it would grow bigger, much bigger. Theatre is important. It, it, remains, it remains vital, and it will never die out. It's impossible. It will never die out. Not as long as there's a marketplace, a street, a dusty road path. There will always be theatre. Every day for the tea, one day for the owner, every day for the one day for the owner, today, today, now for me. <laughs>